Hello again everyone. Welcome back to another review. And in this video, I wanted to take a look at the KDE edition of Manjaro. So let's go ahead and get started. So here on my screen, I am currently running the GNOME edition of Manjaro that I recorded in the previous video. So I'm coming fresh off the GNOME review. And we can see the general GNOME layout that they have in that version. But right now, I have a flash drive inserted that has the KDE edition uh, flashed onto it. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot so we could check out the KDE edition of Manjaro. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'll go ahead and reboot. Let's check it out. And here at the boot menu, we have several different options. We could choose our drivers and uh, languages and things like that, but I'll just uh, use defaults and choose the boot option here and press enter. All right, so here we are on the default desktop from the live image that I booted from that I had flashed on the flash drive. And I'll go ahead and move this welcome screen out of the way. And we can see a cool nifty little feature here for KDE. It detected my screen recorder, which is plugged in via HDMI. It sees it as a monitor. And by default, it's mirroring it, which is exactly what I need. I was able to um, start recording immediately. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, leave that alone. But basically, I'll do unify outputs. That's essentially what it was already doing, um, cloning the screen or mirroring, so to speak. And we can see this same Manjaro welcome that we saw in the GNOME edition in the previous video. It's just being drawn with the uh, KDE styling. And there's a custom theme here. We'll get more into that in just a moment, but I'm just going to go ahead and close this right here. We have an icon here for installing Manjaro. So I clicked on that. I could have also clicked on that from the Hello screen as well. So I'm just going to leave the default at American English and click Next. It detected my location, so that's awesome. I'll leave the defaults here. The installer is pretty much the same as the GNOME version from the previous video. I'm going to erase the disk. I'm not going to use swap in this case. I don't really care, nor am I going to encrypt it. I'm just going to leave the other defaults there. I'll click Next. And I'll type in my information here. Same password. So basically doing this install the same way as last time. All right, all that looks good for me. I'll click Install and let it do its thing. All right, so the installation is finished. I'll check the box to restart and I'll click done. But we'll check out the final version. All right, here we are at the default desktop. Manjaro KDE is installed. So we start off with this really nifty hello screen right here that just gives us a link to the forums, chat room, mailing list. There's a wiki. We can get information about the release that we're on right now. Donate money, which I highly recommend that you do to help keep projects like Manjaro going. The hosting is not free. It's quite expensive and they do a lot of work. So it's not easy creating a distribution. So just keep that in mind. So I'll go ahead and close this and we'll just have a click around. So one thing I'll mention real quick is you could press F12. That gives you a drop down terminal, which is pretty sweet. If you need to access a terminal quickly, you could do that by pressing F12, which is awesome. There is a terminal emulator installed as well. So if you click on your applications, and then you have terminal right here. It's actually console, which is one of the more popular terminal emulators available, one of the best for sure. So if you need a standalone application, they have that as well. So we can customize our desktop in various ways. And some of these controls are built right into KDE and are the same as any KDE distribution. For example, we have the ability to, um, you know, increase the height or lower the height of our panel. And we can add additional widgets and things like that. Now the panel itself is a little bit custom because we have two workspaces by default. KDE defaults to only one. Um, you can go ahead and increase this though. So I'll configure desktops. And I'll go ahead and add additional ones. So I'll just keep adding them. Go ahead and apply that. Maybe I should add an even number. There we go. So now I have some workspaces here that I can have various applications running on. Definitely a feature that I love to use. So that's awesome to see that here by default, whereas with Kitty, normally they just don't really give you that unless you add it. 
We have a toolbox up here in the upper right where we can add additional widgets. We can add things to our desktop. So for example, the folder view is a widget that's useful to add to your desktop. So for example, I can change this to, uh, let's just make it point to the home directory. So we can attach a folder view widget to basically any directory we want. Having it attached to home basically gives us quick access to our files and we can add or we can move this around the desktop as we see fit. So that's just one of many different widgets or add-ons, whatever you want to call them, that are available. So I can go ahead and add additional ones. So for example, if you scroll through here, you can see a list of some of the various widgets that we have available. I'm not going to go into that. If you've used KDE, for the most part, you are already well aware of that. You basically only want to add widgets that you absolutely need. In the past, there's been some instability. I don't know if there still is, probably not. But at the very least, you should only add what you need. So I'll go ahead and bring up the performance application right now. The system monitor. So let's go ahead and look at system load. So I have nothing open, not even, I mean, I have the folder view, but that can't possibly account for much. And we have less than half of one gigabyte being used, which is less than the GNOME edition used in the previous video. So already we have some better performance compared to that, and we also have lower CPU usage on average. So that's pretty cool. I don't know why the GNOME edition was using more resources. The Ubuntu edition of GNOME, its resources are similar to this. It's less than one gig, about five or 600 uh, megabytes and CPU is usually generally pretty low. So we do have some processes that are coming up and uh, you know, using some of the CPU, um, as you can see here, but this is an older dual core CPU, so of course it's gonna be a little bit busier than normal, but you get the idea. So on the panel here, we have a show desktop, so I'll go ahead and open a file manager here, and you can see the show desktop just basically hides that, which is uh, pretty nifty. Uh, for those of you I've used that, I've never used the show desktop icon in any OS before, but you know, it's there. And the icon theme is custom, so that's really good to see that they have some customization there that is specific to Manjaro. The GNOME edition has a lot of customization. The KDE edition doesn't. It has enough customization, enough polish, without it being too much. The GNOME edition had way too much polish, way too many changes. But uh, this is definitely KDE, and they didn't add so many changes to where the underlying desktop environment is hard to really recognize. You could still recognize this as KDE if you've used KDE in the past. And we have your usual icons and widgets here. If I click on the little up here arrow here, we can see some additional things that are uh, specific to Manjaro. So for example, we have the Octopi notifier right here. KDE Connect is a KDE app. If you want to connect it to your phone, you definitely can do that there. And we can customize our notifications. So the Octopi notifier, that's gonna tell us if there's any you know, updates that's specific to Manjaro. And also specific to Manjaro, if I type settings, and I'll see Manjaro settings manager right here. And I've mentioned this in other videos, I'm not going to go too into detail, but basically just like the GNOME edition and the XFC edition, which I also reviewed, any edition of Manjaro can follow different kernel paths. 5.0 is the latest as of the time I'm recording this video. That's not what you're running. So for example, if you were to open a terminal and just check that, you'll be running the kernel version of 419, but you can also install 4.20 or 5.0 or whatever you need. It's always recommended to use LTS when you can because that's the better supported kernel tree. Uh, but you know, that's actually what, it, what it's shipping with by default. So if you need to follow a different kernel, you can do that here. And, and why would you want to do that? An example of that is kernel 5.0 actually enables AMD FreeSync. So if you're a gamer, you might actually see better performance in your games. So there definitely is a reason to consider updating your kernel but even if you don't, then you'll always have the latest available since this is a rolling release. So if you didn't already know, rolling release means that you never have to install a brand new version of the distribution. They're always releasing new versions. You, as long as you keep your packages updated, you never have to basically install it again. 
which is really one of the main draws to Manjaro. You essentially install it once and then upgrade forever. Go ahead and clear up some space here. You can take a look at some of the applications that are installed by default. We have Firefox as the default web browser. So if you've ever seen Firefox before, you know what to expect. It just takes you to the Manjaro start page by default. So nothing major there. Looking at the rest of the applications that come with the release, we have Octopi for adding and removing software. That's our graphical package management utility. And we can search for packages here as well. So if you wanted to install, say, Chromium, which is a browser, also the name of a really fun game, I can go ahead and install that. So I'll click Install. And I don't really need Flash and I don't really care for the GNOME key ring, so I'm not gonna select those. I'll just click OK. I'll apply my changes. And we have an option to run in terminal. That's pretty nifty. Anyway, I'll click Yes, and let's go ahead and install an application. It's downloading pretty quick, and while that's going, we could take a look at some other applications. So games, we have Steam, and that's an installer, so if I was to click on that, it's going to install Steam, so that's good to see that there for development. We have some cute development packages here, and these really take me back. I'm not going to open these and go into too much detail, but, but uh, cute develop and a number of these other applications when I was first getting into software development over 10 years ago, I think it was, um, man, um, that really brings back some fond memories. I was using KDE, and I loved their utilities for developing software. So much fun. So if you're ever curious about software development, uh, I definitely recommend you check these out. So it's cool to see that those are included by default. So moving on, we have graphics. We have Ocular for viewing PDFs and what have you. Gwen View for viewing images. And um, going back from there, Internet. I've already gone over Firefox. I just installed Chromium. You just saw me install that. So it's basically the upstream of Google Chrome. So that's now available because I installed it. Conversation for IRC. KGit for downloading and um, Steam is listed here, I, I guess, because it's an internet application as well. We have Skype online. It's very common for Manjaro to include online versions of Microsoft's applications for those of you that need it. I'm not a Skype user, but I guess if you were, maybe that might work for you. Let me know in the comments below how well these applications actually work. So Office, we do have the Microsoft Office Suite on here. So if I was to click on one, all it's going to do is just bring up a web controller or basically like a um, web container so I can sign into my Microsoft account. I don't have one though. Uh, so I'm curious guys, if you use any of these online Word Office applications, do they work well for you? Do you, do you find them reliable, stable, that you can do anything you could do in the desktop apps? I wouldn't know. I don't have an account. I'm not going to set one up. So I'll leave it up to you guys to let me know if that works out well for you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this since it doesn't do me any good right now. So let's go ahead and bring this back. So I'm not seeing LibreOffice installed here. That's a shame. I would have preferred to see LibreOffice. It's my favorite Office suite. And, uh, you know, I was able to write four books with it, so definitely very capable. But, you know, you could easily install it, so no big deal. Moving on from there for settings. We have uh, print settings and some graphical settings utilities here. I'm not going to get into detail there. We have utilities. So if you have an HP printer, we have that built in here. If you have a supported printer. KFind for searching through your files. Disk usage statistics, which is pretty cool. You can see what's eating up all your hard drive space. USB key writer, so that's nifty. If you want to basically create a bootable flash drive, you can easily do that with that application. And, um, you know, we don't have quite as many applications as some of the spins that we have here, but we have a very good overall list of applications that we can use. So my impression of the KDE edition of Manjaro is that it's actually one of the better KDE distributions I've ever used. And recently on my channel, I've reviewed KDE Neon, which is a great version or a great distribution for those of you that want to run KDE, but that's based on Ubuntu and it's not rolling. Well, I guess you could argue that it is rolling because the KDE Neon project is, you know, they keep it going with the latest KDE software, but it's not true rolling like Manjaro is. And the installation of Manjaro is really easy. 
and it gives you a rolling distribution that you can install once and upgrade forever. And this version's based on KDE and has KDE built into it. So I think that's really great because if you are a fan of KDE, then you're definitely well served by this release. And um, you know any other features that I could go over are going to be specifically KDE features. So if you've used KDE, I know I'm supposed to say Plasma, but um, you know I use KDE interchangeably. But anyway, it's a pretty good release. I'm really impressed by it. In some ways, I like it better than the GNOME Edition. GNOME is my desktop environment of choice, but the GNOME Edition, they've changed way too much. I think they've gone overboard with the customization. But with the KDE Edition, I feel like the customization is just right. There's enough customization to provide the user some value, additional value, but not so much that um, the fact that it's KDE is buried underneath a bunch of extensions and um, all kinds of customizations. So I highly recommend that you check this out. And I, I feel like this could even be like the new uh, Linux Mint KDE edition. There used to be a KDE edition of Linux Mint. I used to call it the best KDE distribution of them all. And this might even um, make it to that point in my list. I don't know quite yet. But Linux Mint, the KDE edition was fantastic. I was really sad to see it go. I feel like that version um, outdid Kubuntu and basically every KDE distribution that was the best. And then the Mint, the Mint project just decided that they're not going to do that anymore. So using Manjaro, I'm just kind of reminded of how it was with the um, Linux Mint KDE because they added a lot of great features on top of it, but they didn't go crazy, but they offered probably the best experience that you could get with KDE. And I think Manjaro may very well be one of the best KDE distributions, if not the best that is available today. The only way I'll know that for sure is by continued usage. So I'm going to keep my eye on this distribution and just see how it matures and ages. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but I just want to see um, basically where the project goes. And I think that this is definitely a great choice for you KDE Plasma fans out there. So yeah, that was my review on the KDE edition of Manjaro. So I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned. I will have more reviews on my channel coming up pretty soon and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.